Uh, good evening. Um, I was going to welcome you along to the forum, but that intro was so long. This is the Fatback Forum on Sunday. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the week. Uh, that was a great game against Arsenal. Um, pity we lost 19-16 at that, and, and, on penalties. Uh, with Mignolet missing the last penalty. Um, well, even though it is the forum, except there's two of us, so it's a two. Um, we're hoping that Ray Dicko joins us soon uh, from up the mountains. Um, before we uh, his, his, his laptop's playing up, we are, there's only three of us tonight because, to be quite frank, everyone is really depressed and nobody's happy about stuff at all. It's all, but all everyone's very obsessed, and that's the one thing I know. See this, look, I've been playing with all these now. See the woo. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, they shouldn't give you any toys to play with whatsoever. You're worse than a so, child. <laughs> someone, and I can go like this. Hello, <laughs> and then back like this. We should use this more often. If we had, if we had a producer, it'd be really great. Uh, where are we? Okay, so yes, this is the forum. Um, we're on the back of Liverpool being beaten two all with Chelsea. Um, the world is caving in around us. It's 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 terrible. There's been lots of analysis of the match from yesterday. There's been lots of discussion about the issues with the midfield that was on display. There's been lots of discussion around what's going on it would be from the back and the front um, and what's going on in the middle part it's mainly the middle part and there's been talk about bringing Genie Wijnaldum back from the dead um, Coutinho back from the dead um, I'm just waiting for somebody to mention Lucas Leiva bring him back sure we may as well start showing in all the lads who are finished and went down somewhere else and, and bring them back as well um, and anyone maybe we could bring Gerard back see if he went, play, fancy being a player manager he could play for us and be manager for Aston Villa at the same time that would be that would be great be uh, but tonight yeah. no, no, yeah, but tonight we, we sort of want to tie this in we don't, we don't, I don't want to go over the lads did a great show last night um, looking at the match in terms of the fatback force, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be an overall ground and, and sort of drag up what happened yesterday. I'm sure everyone's had enough of it, but I, I want to, I want to take us on to the bigger topics that revolve around. It. And I know, Kev, one, one of yours is a good topic in terms of what it was, uh, and secondly, um, my topic sort of leads on from that. And I don't know where to go first. It was, it was going to get Ray Dicko on to do his topic first. To be totally honest with you, I was going to do Ray Dicko's topic, but he's 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 late, right? So it's um. Uh, it's, it's it's really tough, and I don't want to start this topic without him because it'd be a bit, bit a bit harsh to do it. Um, so, given it's a bank holiday here, I think it's important that we start discussing um, how come every bank holiday I end up in IKEA, right? So I don't, well, and I want to know: is it just me, or is it every, because every time I go out there on a bank holiday Monday, there's about a million people in the place, right? And it's like there's only four million people in Ireland, so that means a quarter of the population are wandering around, and they're probably the, the quarter of the population who aren't in isolation at this day. So that's that's really impressive. Right? So, <laughs> If there was one who has COVID, there's about a million people who have it uh, by Wednesday. Um, but I don't because I've got the vaccine, so I'm not going to get it again. Uh, so that's the way I think here. But look, it started me thinking about IKEA and what it is. Um, and like IKEA, you know, it's not it's not Harrods, it's not Harvey Nichols, it's not even the old fashioned Clearies or Arnott's when it comes to buying furniture. But if you get a good designer. That furniture looks every bit as good as anybody else's show house that they've gone off and spent lots of money on designer furniture and had like wood <laughs> beveled from by elves who've made the furniture for you in the whole lot. And I started to be thinking, is Klopp the IKEA of football managers? Oh, sorry, is is Klopp like uh, the leader of the IKEA of football teams? Because Liverpool, in its essence, you look at the players and outside of maybe three or four, they're world class but the rest around it are great players or good players who are being elevated through their manager and those great players around them right and again i'll go back to the designer klopp is the designer here so in klopp's hands he's been able to take this team that's been fashioned from many cheap components um that look good look good in this but move them somewhere else and they just look like cheap scandinavian bookcases kev what <laughs> am, I, am i am i onto something here or is it just because i was walking around ikea the wrong way and all the looks i was getting by people and that's another thing people i want i want us all to do this next time you're in ikea or, or any type of scandinavian store walk the wrong way around because they've actually got lights that point arrows down onto the floor to tell you which way to walk so everyone files in this uniform if you want to imagine yourself in a um uh what's that a pink floyd video right just Start walking the wrong way against the arrows and watch what everyone is going on because it's just it's it's the strangest. It's the, the looks the people get visibly angry at you walking the wrong way. It's like, how dare you? The arrow says go this way, and you're going this way. It's like, where am I meant to go? I have to follow the arrows. So that's 
Oh, I know, back God. to the thing. So is Klopp an interior designer? Should Klopp be on Grand Designs? That's what I'm talking about now. <laughs> I what's it? Himself and Ed Dermot Bannon would be absolutely class together, I'd say. Um how could you put it? I mean, the thing is, he's designed a system and he's bought to he's bought players for the system. He's accommodated a few players. If you think if you look at the actual squad. I mean, the guys in the chat will know more probably better than me, but how many players are in the squad now that are regular players that were there before him? Um, you know, Henderson's won. Um, Trent came through the youth system, but... But, but Trent could show a many. At this think, At this stage. Milner? I think it's all, it's all about him. It's all him. Milner, Milner and Henderson. That's about it. Milner and Henderson, uh, he brought Robbo in, he brought in Virgil, he brought in Joel, I think. Fabinho. Brought in Canate, Fabinho. Gomez was there before him. The Go- Gomez, Rafa brought in Go- Gomez, didn't he? Uh, Bobby was there before him. Bobby was there before him. But in general, you look at, he looked at what he had and he's designed a system to... I think one of his first interviews, the, one of his first in-depth interviews, he sat down and he was like, we need to get X amount of goals mm. and X amount of clean sheets to get us into the top four. Mm. And he designed a team and a system and a way of playing to do that. And then he changed it. We now need to do this, this, and this to take it to the next level. And it was always the case that we ran before we could walk at the start because we got to... We got to Europa League final, lost. Got into the top four, good. Got to Champions League final, lost. Got a Champions League final, won. Won the league. It was almost like there was. We took two or three really big steps before we were ready to. And when it came time, the squad had developed such a resilience, the a go again mentality that um, when we finally won the league. What happened next was almost inevitable because they'd ran through so many walls. They finally got to the top of the mountain and the fall off was inevitable. I think even without COVID, the fall off last season would have happened because I think there's so much mileage in a lot of those players' legs that um, we didn't help them by refreshing the squad when we needed to and how we needed to. Mm. And um, I think we're seeing it now more than ever, more than ever when you're asking players like what happened yesterday, and you saw what Kante did to did to that midfield three. Now look, Henderson, Milner, Fabinho, all experienced <coughs> players, all very good players, but Kante made them all look like shit. They, he really did, and it wasn't from a lack of effort. It was just legs. They just couldn't do what they used to do. But can I just like, on that, like, um, it's because and, and the IKEA thing sticks in my head because what you're saying there is like IKEA, the, the club came in and he said, Right, I need a bookcase. So he went off and he got the bookcase, right? Now he says, Alongside the bookcase, I need a TV stand. And that's the great thing about IKEA because you can get the matching TV stand to make it look well alongside the bookcase, right? Then he said, Well, I need the sofa to go in there that can turn into a bed. And that just fits in. Nice color scheme goes along with what's going on there. Um, and then he has a table that can go up and down. That's fantastic as well. Mm. Um, then he says, I need a bookcase alongside the other side of the fireplace, and I just need the depth to be slightly smaller than the previous one. Again, back in, job done, up, up, all around. It's not costing you a fortune. And you haven't had to bring somebody in who's a carpenter to build these specialised units for you, right? So when I look at, when you say about Kante, Chelsea, on the other hand, are more like City. They brought their interior designers in, and they brought in many interior designers because they're never happy yeah. with, the, with the with the finished product, right? Um and they have money is no object, and they and they throw as much money at all the designer um, shelving and bookcases they can possibly get, in the hope that even without a designer, that they have enough nice things to make people forget that there's actually no substance to what's going on in that in in, in the room whatsoever. And when you mentioned Kante, Kante for me is, I, 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 there's he's very, one of those on his day players for me. Yeah. And his, he always has and a day against Liverpool. Yeah. The one thing I would say, he loves playing against Liverpool. Yeah. Whenever we've played, he, he always comes back from injury to play against, just specifically to come back. He won't play now for the next 400 years. 
right? So it's like, and then the next time we're playing yeah. against them, he'll, he'll appear and you'll have the best game you can, you can possibly have. And I love Kante. If, if we could sign one player from an English team, I would sign Kante. If you put Kante into air midfield with the way Fabinho plays and the way Kante can play, and then you've got the other players who can rotate around him, or Thiago, imagine Thiago, Fabinho, Kante midfield. Like that's just, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, it right? Is, yeah. So, but again, Kante is that type of piece, that really expensive piece that you can put in any room and it look amazing, right? The yeah. problem is though, it it it's 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 it needs a, a bit of leg. yeah, and it's a wobbly it's, leg, and it needs it needs a few lads to go in there and just keep it moving and keep moving it around, and you can't you overuse it one side because it'll tip over. So it's just it's always yeah. there for Christmas. It's in the good room for Christmas. That's the way it is, right? It's in the good <laughs> room it, for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's the table we use at Christmas. It's uh, that's what Kante is. He's he's, yeah. he's a good table. Somebody's mentioned Kate there. Kate is like, what am going to say? What Kate? What's Kate? Kate is like um. It's like a bitty bookcase missing some of the shelves, right? So you know that 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 it should be there, you know it's there, right? And you know that that's going to do a great job when I finish it. But you've gone out to IKEA about eleven times to get the parts, and every time they've had to, ah, oh, there's Ray now he's in with us. Um, you've gone out, to, you've gone out to IKEA to get the parts, and they don't, they have to keep ordering them in, and when they order them in, it's it's still the wrong parts, and you're just waiting, saying, well, the next time, the next time. Yeah. I'll be out there. Be right, can, yeah. yeah, so it's the Kata is now. They're getting rid of the Billy bookshelf and they're bringing the Kata bookshelf instead. It's one way you get almost all the parts and you think yeah. to yourself, that's going to look right when I'm finished and it just never gets finished. It just sits over there and you just and your missus says to you, when are you finishing that thing? So when the parts come in. That's And that's what Ka- Klopp is like. Is there, it's probably been over. our most expensive mistake. Pep keeps looking over. Pep Linders right. keeps going over and says, Klopp, when, when, you, when, when, you, when are you putting him in? When the parts come in? Nah. It's not rough. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on a phone call to get back in. Tom Bowen says, Ray, you just got back from IKEA, which is a fair show. That's what Ray's been out there. He's been out there sending me in the names of the products so I could remember them for doing the segment. <laughs> did, I, did I manage to swear that section? Yeah. No, just about. Just, I was going to start mm. with yours, right? And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll go into the IKEA section because I can just talk absolute shit enough for a while, right? Um, <laughs> and keep ourselves going. You were very successful at it, too. <laughs> yeah. <That's all. laughs> When you're walking around IKEA backwards and people are giving you filthy looks, it gives you lots of time to think about what you're doing, Kev. It's like it's it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's like, well, you got to do though. You got to do that when you got headphones on. You got to have so, headphones on. No, you have don't oh, yeah, have yeah. headphones on. No, you have to hear the people what they're saying under their breath, right. thinking that you that you that they've said it really cute and that you haven't noticed, right? So you can just smile at them, and go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but but back to the point about Klopp being the interior designer. So I guess where I'm getting to with this, and it can take us on to yours in terms of what it is, but when I look at this, right, if Klopp is the interior designer and he's done such an amazing job utilising um, IKEA furniture, right, is it not time for us maybe to go into Harvey Nicks or Harrods or something like that? Because we've got the money. This is just We've shown how good yeah. our skills are. Is it not time for us to go in? <laughs> And just maybe buy a couple of nice pieces, you know, just something, maybe a cante table for the middle of the room, just something there to put in the good room. So is that when people come in, they're not paying attention too much to the Billy bookcases. They're looking at this lovely cante table in the middle of what it is. I think a Campwell table is more like it. Do you know what? It's one of those things that um, we always say to be wary of nice things and look at what happens when it goes wrong. But on the occasion that you get it right, it can be the difference between silverware and a nice day out of the final. Hmm. And we've gone big on, I'd say, on two players, Allison and Virgil. You know, they were the two big players that we went in. We had to get those right. And Allison was a, a huge gamble because at the time, most people, if they're honest, were looking at Oblak and probably Neuer. And Neuer was out of reach, but All Black was the one that people wanted. They wanted that big fee paid, and they wanted it paid for him. Now, we went for Allison on the strength of one really, really good season because the season before, he'd done virtually nothing. And then a couple of weeks later, Chelsea went for Ariza Balaga yep. for a bigger fee, and it went totally wrong. We've seen how many times Man City have got trying to address their back four issues wrong before they eventually, eventually they just threw enough money at it that they had to get it right, you know, and they did. They have credit to them because Cancelo, Diaz, Laporte, three of 
arguably three of the top eight, seven or eight defenders in world football at the minute. You know, they're really, they're very, very, very good. And we've really gone big on two. Uh, Virgil, I don't think, was ever a gamble, but it was still a case of look, that's 75 million quid from for a guy from a guy from Southampton who's been at Celtic. Yeah, he's done okay with the Netherlands, but he had never experienced playing for a big club on a big stage, on a global stage. So there was that kind of a gamble to it as well. Now, I think we desperately need to go to get that Kante table. I think we definitely need to do something in the summer to say, well, say two things. One, that, look, we have ambition to be around challenging for the league for the next four or five years. And we're prepared to back ourselves to do it. And here's what we're prepared to spend to get us there. Plus, the squad needs it. Mm. You know, it's badly needed now. The, the midfield has got eight. We've got eight central midfielders and not one of them can you depend on to turn out uh, to play 40 games in a season. You just can't. None of them. And the other side of it is I look at someone like a Jude Bellingham. Yeah, he's 100 million. He's 18, 19. If, you, if he turns out to be anywhere near as good as what people say he is, and I think he is, you've got a player there for a decade who's going to be one of the best midfielders on the planet. And you're going to pay an average 10 million a year for every year that he's at the club. It's an absolute steal. It's a no-brainer. It's, a, it's basically printing money because he'll be the face of English football for the next decade. Him, him and Phil Foden are the face of English football. It's printing money. You can't go wrong. Right on the Kante table shout, right? So we've we've done. If you think about it, we, we thought we'd refreshed our midfield in terms of um, Keza and yeah. Thiago. The yeah. two, the, they've been our two biggest signings outside of Fabinho, and, and I'll say, look, Fabinho's been a massive success. He plays enough. We know that he's going to miss somewhere between eight to ten games a season because that's just what happens, right? But both Thiago and Keza have had injury problems persistently since they signed, and you saw he was out again. He was missing from the squad again. Thiago was at the weekend, and, and for me, I thought that was the, probably our biggest miss because if you look at that midfield and we're forced to rely on Milner, who's what 26, 27, 28, 30, whatever age is at this point in time, and while he might have immense stamina, he he just doesn't have the legs to run that midfield anymore. Um, is this not where like we can't afford to shop in? The IKEA's when you need when, for your engine room. It's like we we we've we spent every time we've spent big money, we've done quite well, with the exception of potentially case in terms of what's there. But every time we we've done Van Dyke for X of mil, the millions, we've done Allison loads of millions, we've done when they signed the three lads up top, and even Joseph, they were all in, in in big money in terms of what's there. Fabinho, excellent. Thiago, we got him on a good deal in terms of what's there relative to his, his skill set. But we need, I echo in Kev's point, we need two young water carriers, ball carriers, two young Hendersons. And I'm talking about the, when we signed the Jordan Henderson that we signed back in 2011 when, when Comley was here at the time and, and we signed him. And that fella could would just run around all day. He was basically just, it was, it was a Doberman. You know how hyperactive Dobermans get? They just run around and never stop running around. You tell them what to do and they just go over and do it. Right? That's, we need something to do with them. Is this not where we need to spend money on not just okay players and not just nice pieces, but we need to spend them on the best that's available and the best that we, that, 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 that we should be signing them? Yeah, I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna funnel what money we have into a specific part of the the team, it's gonna be it has to be the midfield. You know, you know the the, the front three slash four. You know, we should be able to get another season out of them. Um, quite obviously, um, I've not got too many concerns with the defense and the goalkeeper. We got an excellent backup goalkeeper, by the way. I thought Callagher did brilliant yesterday. Nice. Um, every time he comes in, he doesn't he doesn't let us down in in in, in what he does. Um, so I, it, it is if if we're gonna if we're gonna splash the cash on one or maybe two, um, and I, and, I, and I don't believe for a second it'll be in this window, but in the summer it's got to be the midfield. We, we've suffered badly with available lack of availability, really, haven't we? I mean, even. Um, our kind of cornerstone in Fabinho has been in and out in terms of his availability, uh, and and you know, it's not just the likes of Thiago and, and and Henderson who are missing minutes. We're even we're even finding a young up and coming player in Curtis Jones is is missing a lot of minutes. And let's not forget the bad luck that struck 
Harvey Elliott early doors. You know, he's been he's been off the scene for so long now. So there, there is the area that we need the reinforcements, and I would prefer us to go and spend big on one, maybe two, if if the budget can stretch to it, uh, and if that means you know trying to generate a bit of cash from the likes of Oxlade Chamberlain or Divock Divock Origi to to fund some of this, um, then so be it. But yeah, midfield has definitely got to be the area that we um, that we improve upon in the summer if we want to continue challenging um, not just City but, but maintaining our position in the top four. So, Kev, from that perspective, we've we're talking about we've, we've gone from top. Well, sorry, before Christmas. I had Peter Smith on here talking mad stuff about us being the best team in the world, right? And nobody can touch us. And I pointed out at the time that we were third, um, or second, whatever it was. And I was told to stop being so daft. We're still the best team in the world and we're going to run away with the league, right? Um, I think Pete was confused. Uh, with Liverpool and Manchester City, I've, I've sent him over glasses to correct his colour blindness so that he could be fully aware of the fact that we were red uh, and not blue as it is. Um, <coughs> but isn't this the fundamental difference? Though, what we've done over the last five, six years with Klopp has been not just to overachieve. Now, I have to say, between Edwards, Klopp, the whole system, the, everything that was there, it's been amazing, right? Amazing in terms of what the, the success rate they've yeah. had with the signings. Well, now again, we're reverting, to, regressing to the mean, which means that only about 50 to 55% of your signings will work out if you're good at transfers. So that's why we're starting to see lads go, he's actually really good, but... And it's the but part which has come into the equation that wasn't yeah. there before, right? So there's no guarantee, but is, isn't this where we were good, where we sort of said, right, why don't we, so, where you often see in editors, if we splashed out 50 million on a player, at the same time we bring in a player for 15 million, and actually their worth to the squad has was equal. So like we look at the Andy Robertson deal and we look at the other deals that go on the same summer and Robertson worth Robertson's worth for his eight and a half million that he costs is as much as the other players that come in at the same time. We need to get back to there. We can't just be in the eight and a half million bracket all the time, or, or I'm missing something on this. No, the problem is, look, when we were doing that, the analytics side of the game, there wasn't many clubs out there doing what we yeah. were doing. And that's a gamble that you can take when you're in eighth, trying to get it to fourth. You can take a gamble on an Andy Robertson that, yeah, he will be good enough to get you into the top four if he develops as we think he can develop. The problem is when you're still trying to do that and your ambition is to go from second to first, you're playing in a different ball game there because you're then looking at the likes of a Mo Salah, bringing in Mo Salah for £36.7 million, hoping to turn him into another £100 million player, but knowing that he will be good enough to, ma to maintain your level at top four. Now, Jonathan, you have a fair point. Signed Fakir in January. Mm. <laughs> Fakir is actually, at Betis, has been flying it. He's been Mr. Consistent. He's available all the time. He's playing really well. He's only got one foot, though, because they had to replace know, his leg with, it, with a wheel. <laughs> it just goes to show how good he is. Like, you know, that left foot is an absolute wand. But the thing is, we had no choice but to walk away from it because if we didn't, we'd have been taken from mugs by every single agent that came after him. And Fakir has come out and said it since. It was the people around him that screwed that deal. Mm. It wasn't the club. It wasn't Liverpool. It wasn't, his, it wasn't his parent club at the time. It was the people around him that screwed us and screwed him. And he's changed that, that since. But it just goes to show as well how dangerous it is to play in this market. When you get the, go to the analytical side of it, you look at what a Mo Salah offered you from what he was bringing in at Roma. Yeah, he was getting a decent amount of a goal return, but his assists were through the roof. Dzeko mm -hmm. was, was having probably the career of his <coughs> life, the season of his life when he was playing with Salah for Roma. And that was what we were banking on. Never in a million years did we think he could come in and do what he's done since. But for every one you're going to get like that. You're going to buy a £30 million player who might just take along on the trajectory that he's going to take along at. And that's okay if you're going to be maintaining third and fourth and fifth and maybe challenging to get into a fight with Man City. But if you want to compete with Man City for a league title over 38 games, 
you have to have the not the transfer value worth of 35 million 30 million pound players in every position you have to have the output what you expect to get of 30 million pound players for every position in a 24 man squad and with the best will in the world i just don't think that fsg have the capabilities to do that i just don't think they're capable of spending that amount of money to keep us up with what they're doing and what newcastle will do in time and it's a scary prospect that to compete with that with these two juggernauts is going to be everything is going to have to be absolutely perfect and you're going to have to have the best possible season and you're going to have to have luck along the way just to be able to compete yeah we i did mean it once we did it once you know yeah, yeah. The thing, the, thing, it took out of us. the thing is like you know you take jack Grealish as an example 100 million pound player that city have gone out you know it not not necessarily filling the needs just deciding that that's a player that that they would like to target and like to buy and you know there's no you know if we go out and spend that sort of money you you, you you're talking of a player who's going to be playing every game, needing to be playing every game and delivering sort of out, output on the levels of a kind of a most salary almost. It, 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 for us to be, you know, for, for, for our owners to be willing to spend that kind of money, it's going to have to be almost a cast iron guarantee to get to get results on it. And it, and it, will all, it would also have to f- fill a specific need. I mean, when we went out and spent that money on Alisson and Van Dijk, you know, we were cash rich. You know, we we just cashed in on Coutinho and made an absolutely insane profit on the on the guy, and we were reinvesting. And you know, it paid dividends massively. You know, we 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 got a European Cup and a and a and a first league in thirty years out of it. It was the best money that the club has ever spent, in my view, um, by 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 what we've ended up. Um, getting as a result, um, and what those players still give us today, um, and, and potentially with more trophies ahead in the next few years. But we're just, you know, it comes back to to this kind of, you know, you hear people say, oh, you know, we're dining at the top table and all that sort of stuff. I don't think we've ever really truly been dining at the top table. Yeah, we've we've managed to make a, a, the occasional visit at a specific moment in time, but we're we're, we're still. We're still on the hunt for a certain value um, that would, you know, a Jota, for example. You know what I mean? We're not paying top. We're not going to pay top whack. You know, that's why Sancho for me was never going to happen and Bappe is never going to happen. You know, Jude Bellingham seems like an awful stretch for us. You know, we're still in that sort of next tier, I, I believe, of player that we that we think we can get exceptional value of uh, uh, off and if it come to it we could we could we could still get the same transfer value back off them if not more in five years time is it right and i because I, I want to move along because i think the, the kev we'll go on to your topic because in, in a second because i think it moves nicely into this uh, where we're talking about value and, mm. and transfers but and, and i don't want to get tied down because i think a lot was missed in, in yesterday's game we were tuning up when we were we were playing quite well for about 15 minutes um, and then we seemed to run into the same problems that we have had recently in the in the last two. And I'm not saying recently, I'm saying the last two games because before those two games we were flying again and everything was was rosy and we were going to catch up with City and past them out and, and all that type of stuff, right? And it's just the margin for error in a game in in a league where you have one dominant force and whether people like this or not we are we are looking at the premier league being the same as every other league in europe with the exception perhaps of spain where you have one dominant team and occasionally every four or five years somebody else comes along to have a real run at that otherwise it's just a it's a nominal um title race that happens up until around February time we've had Juventus in Italy win 14 championships in a row you have Bayern Munich who've won the league every year since 2013 in Germany in France you've got PSG who bar last year who win the league because they've got more money than everybody else on the table you go to Spain and you've got Barcelona Real Madrid now obviously Barcelona have their issues but that's where you've had a real competition going on and, and, and until until probably Pep comes in and they they throw over 1 billion at the at the team over the base of, of 6 years there was competition 
there. We just weren't involved in that competition. And we've managed, as I said, we've managed to outperform. We've challenged them now. It's interesting that we've challenged them three seasons. And I'm, I'm proper challenging. We're talking 13, 14, 19, 20. And then we, when we win the league and, and outdo it on them, uh, 18, 19, and then 19, 20. And you look at this year, and we would have to put in one of our incredible runs for the second half of the season that would get us to push them, right? Yeah. I, I just don't think we're pushing them. I think even if we sign, I think it's a very unlikely that we sign anyone, not because FSG are, are tight and that, that they're FSG out and, and they don't spend any money. I think we've got to remember as well, we are having a fundamental change in control in the club. Uh, Michael Edwards is obviously seen out his, his, his reign and he's, he's moving on to passes new. They have a new guy who's already been appointed that's going in there. But I can't see how they go and spend money or how they would want to spend money. The new guy would want to go and spend money while Edwards is still there because surely he's working on his own stuff. Um, and if Edwards is going to a Real Madrid or a Barcelona or something like that, like there's there's that natural piece that he wants to hold something back so he doesn't know exactly how he's going to run the club when he's gone. There's, there's a new name. There's a new chief in town and Summer's going to be there. And if, if anything, I'd be almost certain that FSG will loosen the poor strings or will allow or there'll be a lot of money to spend this summer because it's as I said, there's a new sheriff in town and he's going to want to put a stamp um on what things are going on. But that doesn't resolve the situation that we are 21, 22, we've got 22, 23, 23, 24, and that's potentially the last we've got two more years of Klopp after this. Right. And and, and I've said this many times. If our success with Klopp is a league title and a Champions League, it's fantastic. But for the type of football and the type of team we've had for that period, it will be a massive underachievement. Underachievement and mm. a letdown. It's been great and it's been fantastic to watch. Like we're fant- when we're playing, when you look at Salah's goal yesterday, and it's mainly because of Salah, right? And there's a bit that we haven't covered, which is the Salah contract. I just hope it gets resolved and we get to see him play out the next three or four years at Liverpool. But when you look at this and you look at us at our best and you look at the way we carved open Chelsea at the start of that game it's electric football it's 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 football the way you want to see teams play it the way we can cut a team apart even if they sit back we have a way to beat them if they go along against us we have a way to beat them if they try to go narrow we can go wide if they go wide we can go narrow like this we've answers to all the things but we just don't have enough crayons in our set right we just don't have enough shelves for a billy bookcase Right, and we're still waiting for those couple of shelves to come in because the lad said they'd be in February, but there's meant to be global supply issues all over the shop, right? So when I, when, when I come back to it and I look at this, it's time for us, and I believe it, it's time for us to be able to go into the Harrods, into the Brown Thomases, into the Harvey Nicks, and see the pitted designer if you want to. You know the, the bit that fundamentally changes your gaff from being, that's a really nice design gaff to, fuck me, that's amazing. They must have spent a shitload of money on this. And we need to do that. Otherwise, I completely agree with both of you. Otherwise, we are shooting at the third and fourth spots and hoping that and that one down year that you get the top two teams or the top three teams, that you're the team that elevates yourself, which rarely happens. Look at Arsenal. They, Wenger was relying on that for the best part of 10 years and missed out so many times to, to, to get another league title. Um, yeah. And I just I just genuinely hope that, that, that we can get there. Yeah, one of our see, one of one of our consistent problems this particularly this season, um, and, and, in, and in direct comparison as well to City, is that you never feel like there's going to be any new attack and impetus coming on the pitch at 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, whenever we need. You know, I know we dominate a lot of games and we often don't need to bring fresh attack and impetus off the bench because we've got the, the game well in hand. Um three quarters of the season. But for those other quarter of the games, you know, the draws this season, um, you know, the game we've lost, the games we've lost, the two games we've lost, you just don't feel like there's anything coming off the bench that that could change the game, that could give you a, an extra, di- you know, an extra sort of bit of, bit of dynamism. Um, whereas when City are in a bit of trouble, you know, they always, you know, not that again, it's very often, but they'd have... You know, maybe a Sterling to come off the bench, maybe a Mares to come off the bench, Grealish, you know, De Bruyne would, would start plenty of games on the bench. You know, it's we just don't have, you know, you, you're often turn into an Ox or a Bobby or, you know, these are these are these are guys who just aren't aren't prolific goal scorers or creators. You know, so that's that's a big weakness for me. You know, when when teams sense that, that they've got the possibility of even a point with 
15, 20 minutes to go. We've got nothing to, to really scare them and panic them. Like like you see with City, they managed to panic the opposition into mistakes, even if they're even if they're not in control. And that that's very rare these days. So that's a big weakness for me. The the, the what coming off the bench at the moment, it's just not good. Can I just respond to that one there to Olivier? Just just on that, Olivier, we're not the same as them. They're trying to add the designer furniture pieces when they haven't finished building their gaff, right? We have a lovely finished house. We've got an incredibly designed sitting room, but it could do with a signature piece or two just to turn it from just being a fantastic looking house to a grand designs winner. That's the difference. That's what a, that's what a Kante table brings to your house. I think you've got to look at it this way, right? Um, you've got a 36-year-old James Milner, a 30-year-old mm. Jordan Henderson with a lot 21. of miles on his legs. And you've got Curtis Jones at 19 starting his career, Harvey at 18 starting his career. That's four. Thiago, sublime footballer, plays half a season. Mm. Naby Keita, on his when he's on it, and, he, and in fairness, this season, when he's played, he's been fine. He's been absolutely no problem with him. The problem is, I don't think Klopp trusts him in big games. He should have played yesterday. No doubt in my mind, he should have played yesterday. It was a game that, that needed him, needed his energy. Ox, this season, been fine. He's been absolutely fine. He's, he gives exact. He gives you exactly what you expect out of a player in his squad position. He's versatile. He does it. He's honest as days long. He'll try his heart out for you. And on the occasion, he has a bit of quality. The problem is there's two spaces there that you're looking for someone who's between 24 and 28 who's about to come into the best years of his career. Not quite there yet, but he's about to really kick in and show you who he is, what he's on the cusp of being brilliant. That's where we're short. We're short two of those players. And in the summer, they're going to have no choice but to do this, Phil. Mm. You know, they have no choice now because they're, they've turned this investment into a 3.5 to 4 billion pound investment that Liverpool now is worth. Liverpool is not worth 4 billion to advertisers if we drop out of the Champions League. So they're going to have to put their hand in their pocket whether they like it or not, and they're going to have to spend some serious money to make sure that we can maintain where we are. I, That's I the just, problem there. I, I think, the, I think the one, the, one of the, the one, in, one link that's been really interesting to me is that Zachary interest. That Zachary interest. Yeah. He's on a free, right? And that's the type of signing that you could see us making, which free, which allows us to sign a fella on a free and then still be able to sign somebody for 40 to 45 million. That, that gives you your two players in midfield yeah. that you need to get, right? So ultimately, from the, from the, business side of the house it's looking like that we split the cost of two players over 20 to 25 million the wages get get absorbed in and get get written off yeah. in terms of the cost the, there's a problem the problem for the for a signing of dennis Zakaria, and you can say this about any free, and there's a lot of really good mm. free loan players or not loan players sorry there's a lot of players coming up their contracts yeah now Zakaria can go to united and start yeah, yeah. He, he can go to old trafford and he would start for them he's better than anything they have in that position and he will get a shit ton of money to go and do it. He will get a shit ton of money to come and play for Liverpool as well. But he's not an automatic starter. He'll have to work his nuts off to get even into the starting eleven. But isn't that how we've sold? And, isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that what you need Klopp for? Isn't that how you sell? Yeah, that's how you have to sell it. That's how you sell it. He's able to show. There's, there's Jose. Everyone was expecting to be the bench player, the fellow that comes off the bench, and he fought his way into the team. There was when Yaldam, when we signed him, everyone was expecting to be a 10 or to be part of the front three. No, he's a midfielder. He worked his arse off. He became a mainstay of my team. Isn't that what Klopp sells? That once you put in yeah. the hard work, once you put in the effort, you get it. He can even point to Simicus and say, this guy is now Absolutely. sharing reps with Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson was untouchable up until this season and now we as Liverpool fans was when we see Simicas's name on the team sheet you're saying well I actually get that maybe his final ball is just that little bit better than Robertson's at this moment in time and it makes sense to play him in some games like against the Crystal Palace or a Norwich or something like that and leave Robertson out because we need that little bit of bit of extra quality in the final tour yeah. a bit more I, I'd go and pay the six million for him now yeah I would I'd go and pay I he's he's a he's brilliant in the six he's six foot three he can get around the pitch he's got a brilliant record for he's dependable as the days long. About two years ago, he had a bad knee injury that kept him out for about 20 odd games. But other than that, he doesn't miss games. And 
his distribution is good. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful. He's Swiss international. I There is no downside to this. There is mm. absolutely zero downside to signing Dennis Sekaria. I think he's an, abs he's an absolute no-brainer. And the fact that he's one of those, it goes back to last, se last winter. I was fuming last winter that we didn't have a centre-back lined up to be signed on January 3rd. Mm. It was it was negligence of the highest order that we didn't have that done and dusted. I'm convinced we're not signing anyone in this window purely and simply because, for whatever reason, they're adverse to signing people in January unless they absolutely have to. And it seems such a waste to me that it's such a waste of a window. You get two chances every year to improve your squad, and one of them is January to February. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever why we shouldn't be taking advantage of this market, especially with the state of football on the continent. Financial-wise, especially in Germany, France, the Benelux countries, because they've all been playing behind closed doors for a long time again, and their TV re revenues are, are up the wall. And I bet you a pound a penny this Gladbach will take money off someone to get him, mm. to get him gone and to get AV. Right, move, moving along. When you talk about signings and value, mm. I think the, the, we wanted to know what our top five best value signings have been at LFC. Kev, gonna, like right. I was going to look. Do they have to be LFC signings, or can we? Can they be signings for other teams that have resulted in us being where we are? Like, because you're sure you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> I know, but there's been mention of Phil Jones in in the comments tonight, and I think like if you think the sliding doors moment is that. Phil Jones was coming to Liverpool up until the 24th hour when Alex Ferguson intervened and took Phil Jones to Man United instead. And I remember the rage. I remember the rage of Liverpool fans at that stage going, this is outrageous. Why can't we Why can't we get somebody like that? And, and oh, I watched today. He was their best player today. Do you know what I mean? Not hard. For, not someone, hard, who, yeah, but for someone who had to take the ball hard, in no. anger in two years, <laughs> to, be his, to be their best player is, is shocking. I mean, but we've had some absolute belters over the years. Come I've on, just, then. What's, what's your top right. five? My, my be best value one that I had done was Joe Gomez. Uh, three and a half million. And arguably could see out his career at Liverpool if he's if he wants to. Totally up to him. <laughs> you posh. Jim. <laughs> 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 Mad. Um, no, I, yeah. I think Joe Gomez at three and a half million, you, you couldn't go wrong. Uh, Phil Coutinho, 11.7 million, sold him for 121.5. Biggest proper transfer profit I think the club has ever made, ever. Even when we signed him, I thought, I think we initially signed him for eight and a half million from Inter Milan, and he made his debut in the FA Cup with Danny Sturridge. And um, I thought, oh my god. I was just looking at him playing, and it was just like, how how do we how do we nick this kid? You know, and up until he started playing with his fake back injuries and stuff, he was brilliant. You know, I think oh, what's it? 152 appearances, 41 goals from midfield, cracking. And they weren't tappings. You know, he was scoring some brilliant goals. He was a great player, right up until the time that he started uh, smelling it himself, and that was it. I mean, ever since he's moved, the list of injuries he's had, absolutely shocking. Joel so Matip on, on a free. Hang on, you've got Joe Gomez, Phil Coutinho, and now Joel Matip. I think Joel Matip has been an absolute values. bargain. Best have value put, signing. Have we put a time li limit on this, like from 2010 to now? Or is it like this is ever? You know what? It's, okay, you could go back and you could look at um, Steve Finnan, three and a half million. Brilliant serving for the club, but outrageous all, value. All of these guys won the league, bar Coutinho. Coutinho paid for the league. Do you know what I mean? Everyone else, we've had a cup run, we've had a league cup, you've had an FA Cup, you've had a Champions League run, and what have you. But these guys won a league. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, John Matip on a free, he's, he's still 30. I mean, we're getting the best year this year. Consistency wise, I think he's a phenomenal player. Mm -hmm. Arguably our best centre half this season, and uh, one of the top defenders in world football. Um, Andy Robertson basically got him for free. We paid eight million for him from Hull. Sold Kev Stewart to Hull for eight million. What's Kev Stewart doing now? By the I way, I have no fucking clue. 
<laughs> he's manager. He's manager what? at uh, Tranmere. That's that's uh, that's official. And probably the best value money that we've ever spent is Salah, because for what we spent, for what he's returned, is almost priceless. He is the best player in the world at the moment. Uh, I, I, can... I, I want to throw in a couple of shouts, right? Because David Speedy was an immense value signer for us for the 89-90 season, right? And, and for he came in, I know Sionis got rid of him as soon as he walked in the door, right? But he was an incredible player for us in the, the, the year we last won the league prior to what it was. And it was I remember him signing and I was there going, This is mad. Because then he played for Coventry beforehand and then all of a sudden we signed yeah. him and he was just he was everywhere. He was he was one of those players because I love Steve McMahon. He just even though he played in a different position, but he just had that angry he was like the prototype to Craig Bellamy, right? And I loved the Craig Bellamy signing. And I could put Craig Bellamy in, in some of our best value signings because he was instrumental in a lot of Rafa's um Great wins. Think about the time in the, the the camp now, right? And then there was the him and the and the Reese incident, like that alone, like that that paid the transfer value alone for for getting Bellamy in to start swinging golf clubs at Reese. Like that to me is the is the best. You can't go wrong with that whatsoever. Um, Ray, who who any of any would you argue any of Kev's signs or have you got any other names to throw in the mix for um, for, be, for top five best value signings? All decent shouts. I mean. I, on a, on a, on the free transfer, Gary Mack back in what was it, two thousand sort of two thousand time. I mean, he he was a solid addition at that time. Just just the kind of just the experienced kind of midfielder we need back then. That goal against Everton lives long in the memory at Goodison, and I know it's a long string of last minute heartbreaks that we've uh, we we've given them. But you know, Gary Mack and the song as well, like you know. It was one that went on for ages, and uh, so yeah. I mean, if you look at if you look at how much we paid for Allison, and, and then compare that to how much we paid for Pepe Re, Pepe Reina back in the day, mm. six six million for Pepe Reina, six six and a half million for yeah. him. Um, you know that was that was a, an absolute bargain. He was he was an, a brilliant goalkeeper for us. Um, you know, wouldn't wouldn't look out of place. You know, at the time in, in the team now, sort of thing. Um, I mean, in, in of the current crop of players, funny, isn't it? If you'd have said this, if you'd have asked this question six months ago, probably would have said Andy Robertson was the ultimate bargain buy. But given you know, he's kind of he's you know he's dropped off a little bit, and Simicus is actually doing an excellent an excellent job at the moment. But Andy Robertson, eight eight millions, an absolute. An absolute steal. I mean, what would he be worth now on the open market? Fifty million, something like well, that. Your man, the PSG signed uh, the Hakimi, the right back. They paid over seventy million for Hakimi, mm -hmm. and Hakimi is very, very good. Don't get me wrong, but he's no better at right back than what Robbo is at left back. Mm -hmm. You know, so that gives you a perspective of what Robbo would be worth on the open market if he was up for sale now. Yeah. He would be in the 65, 60 to seventy million pound bracket. I so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in some names because this, this, this is this, some of this is outrageous. Not one of you has mentioned James Milner. James Milner changed the culture at this club beyond doubt. Before even even um, Klopp comes in, you have Milner's influence starting to come through. If you look at the Henderson's been influenced by Milner, you look at the Gomez was around with Milner was there. You know, Firmino was there with Milner's there, and all of them talk about how big of an impact he's had in that dressing room to change them as part of changing the mentality from being, you know, wanting to be there to understanding what you have to be there. He costs us nothing, and since he's come in, we I think well we missed out on the Champions League once in the whole time that he's been at the club. We've won the Champions League. We've gone to another Champions League final. We've gone to the Europa League final. We've won the league. We finished runners up in the league, and for whatever. Reason I know we, we we hear about it, it's got its own name, the Brexit midfield. But that Brexit midfield has beaten PSG away, it's put Real Madrid to shame. Like, it's 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 crazy, yeah. But for what he's given us and what he's done, and the fact that most Liverpool fans will always think of James Miller being their player, despite him playing for Newcastle, Leeds, Man City, and winning league titles at Man City, yeah. Villa, Villa as well, for a stint. right? For such a long period of time, it's 
and I, I look, I laughed at with James Milner for three years, and I'm sure if James Milner wanted to go back and listen to some of the parts that we did, and when he signed, and I'm talking about Callum Hines hooves and everything because he's no feet. He used to run around in, in in Hines tins because he could just fall over all the time. He kicked the ball and fall over like that was that was Milner. But Sammy Hoop, you lads, come on, captain there Sammy Hoop, yeah. was an absolute colossus. Two point mm. six million, even then when he signed from Vidim Tway Tway, it was like he was just ah, that's that's a signing and a half. Like, Ah, you very that's... rarely see that kind of a signing now these days. Yeah. The, that's why that's why what you make for me makes the Robertson signing so special. The Joe Gomez is a gamble on a kid, but yeah, you know, that's fair enough. But Andy Robertson was pure analytics. It was it was pure study of what output he gave when he was at home. And they knew what they were getting when when they brought him in. And he's almost a walking advert of what you can do when you've got it right. But there's so many clubs are doing this now. It's yeah. so hard to pick up that. That's target. how West Ham West Ham are doing that in the in the space that we were doing it up yeah. until about three years ago. Sorry, lads, another one. None of us have said Luis Suarez. He cost twenty six million. But look what he did when he was at the club. Look what he did. And I'm talking <laughs> about everything. Biting players, the works. Like this is this is a fella who not only brought football but brought drama. He brought dream team to Liverpool Football Club. It's like this is this honestly, and he's probably in our top five players ability wise. Ah, he's probably in top three players ability wise. If, if Salah wasn't there, I'd argue that he was the best player, the best actual footballer we've ever had. Right, and he's just. But when you think about what we did, and how we spent that money, because we went spent fifty million on Andy Carroll and spent twenty two million on Luis Suarez, and look at the goal yeah. return we got over him. Yeah, look, at, look at what he did as a player when he was on fire. What he did for that team and how far close he drove us towards almost winning the title. And I'll say, single handedly, that's I, 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 you go back a lot. What thirteen, fourteen? That's driven by his relentless desire to win. Like you, you took him away the following season, and, and it was a nothing. Team. It was a shambles. Was and he's him. still he's still a player today. I mean, you know, we we, you know, that that bit of business. I mean, it's soured by the Andy Carroll kind of transfer. But but to 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 sell, you know, Torres and bring in Suarez. You know, well, I know Suarez came in technically a, a few weeks before, but um, yeah, I mean, and he's still a player today. Whereas you look, I mean, Andy Carroll today playing for Redden. I mean, you just. Mm. Gives you an absolute nightmare. Still, that transfer—it's—it yeah. it, it's, it, it's highlights what can happen when it goes when you panic. Yeah, and yeah. That, when you get the chop, when you get the chopper up in the air and you press that panic button, yeah. that's that's the type of outcome that you can have. And um, you just wonder if that's that's still a story that kind of haunts the halls of uh, of of you know the offices in Anfield. I think it probably does to a point. It has to, especially when you're buying English players, because for for all the talk of, and you get an awful lot of it on forums and on the web, you know, sell Ox, sell, you know, get rid of Milner and what have you. You have to replace these players with English players. Mm. Now you're always going to have an English premium at the best of times, mm. but there's only a handful of English players who you would actually look at and think, yeah, I take a punt on him, and they're going to come at a premium. And it's more about getting their personality, making sure their personality is a fit than their technical ability. Because it, it's the one thing that the English FA did really well when they, when St. George's Park came into being. They've improved a lot of the current generation of English players, technically, are very good footballers. You know, you look at the likes of Jack Grealish, um, you look at some of the Arsenal lads, Saka, Smith Rowe, um, Bowen at, at West Ham. Declan Rice, they're technically all good footballers. It's about getting the personality right and, and, and making sure that when we do sell off, when Milner does retire, that we're bringing in a player who's going to fit and who's going to have the right mentality. That's more important than anything. Yeah, Declan Rice is going to cost someone <coughs> million if, if they're to prize him away from West Ham, which is... I think West Ham will need to sell him. To, mm. to fund how they want to carry on. Mm. You know, at some point, they're going to have to part ways. Would you say that Harry Maguire has been one of our best signings? Because like, <laughs> you can just continually laugh. Like, no, matter, no matter how bad it gets, you can just go, well, you know, you spent 80 million on Harry Maguire. You can just, every sentence, no matter how bad it is, if any United fan says that, you go, you spent 80 million on Harry Maguire. It just stops yeah, everything just... dead in its tracks. 
Yeah, between that and the Kepa, you know, splurge, it, it was, mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was a real kind of like one-upmanship from, you know, from Chelsea and United in those scenarios that they wanted to better, you know, they wanted to be seen to be making that record transfer. And they just got, they, both of them just got carried away and they've both been burnt badly. I mean, Kepa obviously doesn't really get a game now. He sits on the bench and, and they've got, they've managed to sort of, hit on Mendy and, and and they're doing well in that regards. You know, United mm-hmm. to keep persistent with Maguire because of, you know, his English connections, the profile of him. He's still a bit of a, you know, a bit of a poster boy when it comes to in the England um, national team. And they just, they feel like they have to keep persistent because they've paid all that money. But every time he sets foot on the pitch, he is absolutely woeful. He's got at least two really horrific mistakes in him per game. <laughs> It's 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 outstanding. It's been a long time since I've seen a centre back capitulate like that. I mean, when he first joined, and when he was, uh, I think where he was at Leicester before, wasn't he? Hmm. Yeah, he was good. He was. He, was, he wasn't eighty million good. No, he was. He was thirty five million good. There was two signings that Jamie wanted, we kept banging on about: Michael Keane and Harry Maguire. And I said, Jamie, they're both Minecraft heads. They're both <laughs> Minecraft characters trying to play football. I said, you, yeah. I wouldn't want them anywhere near a club for the amount of money that they're going to be signed for because they're both, they both look like rectangles. Like you yeah. basically have two rectangle blocks on top of each other running around and they can't move their arms and legs and play like they're like they're playing an 8-bit computer graphics screen. It's, it's awful. Back to us. So we've got, we've got right, Mane. There's been a few shouts for Mane because they're saying Mane signing in 16, 17 really kicks off the, the Klopp era and he does change. And I remember that fourth season for Mane. And remember he gets injured, wasn't it? He got injured at the end of March, was it? And we sort of struggled to get over the line then for the, the, the rest of the way with, with, with Klopp. I think he gets injured. Does he get injured in the derby um, towards the back end of March and we lose him for about eight weeks um, and he'd been on fire for us right the way up to, through the season. And, and it was amazing because I remember when we saw him, I was thinking, what the fuck are we doing spending that amount of money on Manny? Manny, Sadio Manny. And then he just made an absolute smithereens out with a whole lot of us as, as human beings. Um, the, I, I agree with you to Mo Salah. I think when you when we look back on this, even now, and like 26.6 million seems like a huge transfer fee, but nothing. It's not even close to what that guy has done for us. Not even close not even close to what that guy has done for us. Like, I he's was not worried like... when we signed Sadio, or not when we signed, when we signed Mo, that we were going to lose Sadio on the right. Because mm. Sadio's first season was on the right, and he was so mm. good. But, and I thought, will he be able to do that off the left cutting in? It's a different game, and he'd never done it. He played through the middle at Southampton. Yeah. And he was electric. You know, he was raw and aggressive, and everything that we see in him today but he wasn't polished. On the right wing, he was taking fullbacks on. He, he was confident enough to go either way. Unlike what Mo, Mo is very reluctant to go on his right foot. That's how he got his goal yesterday, by going on his right. But I was really worried that he wouldn't be able to translate that onto playing on the left. But my God, yeah, he took to it like a duck to water. First game. So uh, any older shouts? I think uh, John Aldridge must be worth the show. Because what he achieves with Liverpool Football Club when he signs, basically relatively unknown. Him and Houghton. Houghton actually is another great show for for uh, best value signings. Two of them come in and become part of the best Liverpool side until this recent one. Um, where you've got Houghton, Berg, yeah, and some, Aldridge. Someone said it earlier on, John Barnes, nine hundred, <coughs> nine hundred grand. I mean, in fairness, nine hundred grand back then was still was a, a lot of money. Of, it was still a good chunk of change. Well, the know? record the record fee at that stage was three point two million for Ian Rush to Juventus. So it's not that. Um, well, like, you're, it you're wasn't paying. long. Uh, what year was it? Eighty four, eighty seven, eighty seven. Barnes come in, yeah, eighty six after the eighty six World Cup. Right. So it was a so, good way after because when did Clough break the one million? That was nineteen seventy seven, wasn't it? Yeah, first million but, pound player. But one and a half million oh, was the highest transfer France, fee from eighty one, I think, until eighty. 687 and then somebody goes right. Ray Wilkins goes to AC Milan I think around that time for about two and a half million and then Rushy goes to Juventus for 3.2 million it took a long time to go you know to, for that inflation to go yeah the, inc- the increments were very very small weren't yeah they? and then they just went yeah 
So when I, when I look at it, when, when we talk about Barnes, it seems really small these days, but at the time it was like, a, it'd, be, it'd be a £30 million pound player nowadays. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like in, in relative terms to what we're looking at, and it's, look, 900 grand's a bargain. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's still a mad when you think about that was John Barnes. But when you when you go through the years and you look at all these players we signed and all the ones that have had the impact, and I, I think of the 90s, and, and I have very fond memories of the 90s, but this recent spate of transfers from 2015 onwards, I, I can't remember as many transfers that I've, I've been as happy with. Like, I can think, like, Ray, you you remember when we, before you even joined on the pod, um, and we would have been over in your gaff going over to the matches back in between 12, 13, 14, 15. And the amount of players I hated in the Liverpool <laughs> squad, and I mean, seriously hated, right? And this was going on for years. This wasn't like a new thing. This was going on for years. But like, that period of, like, I despised that. most of the Liverpool team that was torn up every week. And when people say, you know, I hate them as people, but I hate them as football players. When I have to watch Stuart Downing and Martin Skirtle and John Glenson and, and all these shams just playing football, like you just go. Um, we pay good money for a lot of them players as well. In the in the in you know in, in relative terms to how the market was operating at that point, we were mm. we were spending a lot of money on players that that weren't delivering, and then we were you know we were we were we were getting rid of selling on for 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 much less than what we bought them for. I mean, it was just we just didn't seem to be able to. And by the way, there's certain there's certain. Um, parallels with United now who, who seem to not be able to hit on, you know, players and a blend and, a, and the right mix to be able to kind of be consistent and, and you know, sort of, uh, they're, they're, they're sort of grasping at straws, it seems, in, in every transfer market. I mean, who would have, you know, well, a, a, a few of the Trippers lads called it, but anyway, the Ronaldo the Ronaldo transfer and, and the complete backfiring of that sort uh, of thing. Listen, if Ronaldo signs for City, they're probably another 10 points ahead of where they are at this moment in time, right? So yeah. I know for United, it was the best thing that could possibly happen because mm. it was going to disrupt every anything that was going to good that was going to happen there, allowing the likes of Sancho to develop as a player, allowing Mason Rashford, to, yeah, allowing Rashford Greenwood to, to develop as players, went out the window. There's that fella just going off and just doing whatever he wants. Did you see it? It was a tough year, had plenty of ups and downs, except for my 47 goals in all competitions. Like, what? Either he's doing that on a wind up, right, and he knows what it is, or else, fuck it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that is the fella's mentality. Once I'm scoring the goals, I don't really care. What they're saying, he's only scored two goals from open play since September. It's like, it's, 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 it's yeah. insane. But when um, we're reading the likes of Paul Koncheski and Joe Cole, and my God, you know, they were dark days. You know what I mean? That, like, wow. that's. I, I I could I could never ever get on particularly the Joe Cole sign and I just could not get on board with that and the fact that he got sent off on his debut like that just I mean I'll never know, forget sitting that, that's with... why like that's right in the season off day one really you know back then so sort of I'll never I'll never forget that game watching that Stoke match Tony Pulis in Anfield and fucking Joe Cole comes on and hoofs the ball over the cup over the cup. <laughs> From eight yards out, and I was just like, I remember Steve was with me, and he just stood up and said, "That's fucking it. That's it. We're all off." <laughs> <laughs> and you could look at the at the, you could look the ground thought, and the players around him thought, saying, "Fuck this! Look, look at this fella. He's blown out his arse. He's on for five minutes, and he's blown out his arse. What's the point? What's the point? What was the point in him?" I just, I'm, oh, yeah, no. That was just anyway. a sign of desperation, wasn't it? it? That was how desperate things were. <laughs> that an England international with 70-odd caps was available on a free. Yeah. And we'll take a punt on him. Yeah. Didn't bother thinking to sit him down and, you know, how do you see yourself in the next two or three years kind of thing. Ah, just done a deal. No. And, and that's where we were. It was just nuts. The early days of Julia's reign, we, we, we signed some decent players. And that's where the, 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 the likes of... Of hoopy and stuff comes in, and it wasn't too much money in terms of what was being lashed out. There are reasonable transfer fees, and that's where I definitely hoopy definitely gets in there. I definitely think David Speedy's worth a shout, but Ray Houghton and John Aldridge are two phenomenal shouts back then because I think Houghton might have cost like a bag of crisps, three <laughs> bags of coal, and a coach ride for the Oxford team in the FA Cup. Um, and then you could put you go on to it, yeah, look. For me, Mo Salah, I'm with, I'm with you, Kev, I 100% agree. Mo Salah is the best value signing we've ever made. And I'd argue that Luis Suarez is the second best signing we've ever made. For pure value, for what they did and what they came on. I think somebody mentioned Arbeloa. The Arbeloa is... Arbeloa was, was, becomes 
an incredible signing, but not for us, for Real for Madrid. Real Madrid, yeah. Right? He was, he was great signing for us. Madrid when he yeah. went back. But he was... Um, that, that's the probably regret that I have. He's, he's one of the very few players that leaves Liverpool and becomes a better player after they go. Um, and you could probably argue Javi Alonso did as well, to be fair. <laughs> Alonso did. Alonso, actually, we didn't mention Alonso was an £11 million signing when yeah. he comes in for... for Javier Mascherano as well. Same, same. Mascherano. Player. What a shout. Yeah. On a profile. That was weird, yeah. wasn't it? Because do you remember when they both came to West Ham? Do you yeah. remember the story yeah. around that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean... You couldn't see that happening nowadays. It's illegal now. But yeah. um, the, the, I could I just couldn't remember looking. I don't know if it was on Sky Sports News or if Sky Sports News was a thing. It might have been in a paper or something. I've seen te, a picture of Tevez and Mascarano at West Ham. Yeah. Huh? And, Al, and Alan Pardew wouldn't play him. Do you remember? Yeah. It was just like, how did this happen? What? That, that was so. I don't, I don't get that one. Danny Morphy served as well. First price from crew that may well be the case, but, but still a knob. you can't get past Danny Morphy these days. You can't just <laughs> look at him and he's just he's 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 he should have played for Everton. He's that bitter about everything. He's basically he took it was like he sucked the life force out of Mark Lawrence and then sucked his own life force out of himself and then went on the television to talk about football. He hates football, he hates football with a passion, he hates everything that yeah. reminds him about him being a footballer and what was going on. So, no, I'm not having that. Um, see, I've never spoken about before. Uh, but anyway, the the just shows you the footballers you know, away from football aren't necessarily as horrible as they are on the football pitch. And I'm looking at you, um, Stuart yeah. Down. I really hate him. Um, <laughs> It's probably my uh, that is probably my most despised. That's probably where your fixation came from about Middlesbrough, wasn't it? No, nah. no, nah. just hate Stuart Down as prick. That's it's that simple. There's nothing good about him. Uh, not nothing, nothing redemptive about him at all. Like he was gutless on the pitch. Like I, I could have played against Stuart Down. I would just kicked him up the hole in the first thirty seconds. It'd never come near you for the rest of the match and just stay. Like, oh, it's horrible, horrible. Uh, right to wrap it all out. Ray, you came up with the most ridiculous topic I've ever heard in my life, and I, I, I'm not even going to say it because it's just it's it's, 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 dis, it's disgusting. I know you, you love it. You just <laughs> fucking said disgusting one. Uh, I know you love a cup, Phil. Um, no, I mean. Look, it's it's been a depressing sort of, you know, Christmas period, really. You know, at one point, uh, I know we had a game postponed, but one point, like, it, it's it's completely crushed our, for me, crushed our title ambitions, really. Obviously, City have taken nine points over that period, and they just, they've got a proper head of steam now. You know, I don't, how many games, how many is it in a row? Is it 10 in a row, 11 in a row? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's you know the juggernaut is, is at full speed, and if like me, <laughs> watch their game against Arsenal, you know, and you kind of got yourself a bit wound up. I think some people probably got more wound up than others about it, but you know, watching them go a goal down, thinking there was maybe a glimmer, uh, even though we had to take care of our business against Chelsea still. And then, you know, seeing what happened in terms of them getting the rub of the green and the decisions and the VAR and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yesterday I was, I, I went into it probably with lesser expectations, kind of more realism. I think Shawnee said it last night on the Fatback Four, came straight out with it really. Uh, and my, 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 I guess a bit of advice now is don't, don't let your season be ruined by all of this, you know, COVID, you know, the, the shit show that's been the postponements, the um, the juggernaut that is Manchester City and being wound up by, you know, the squad that they've got and, and the fact that really the, the, the game has been kind of tilted in their favour uh, yet, yet again, really, in my view, you know, and, and it's, it's something that even was out of their control, you know, COVID's not something that they brought to the table here, but... Enjoy the rest of the season. Concentrate on the Cups. We've got a, a League Cup semi-final coming up. We've got a Champions League, a uh, winnable Champions League tie. We've got uh, Shrewsbury in the FA Cup coming up. Coming up. There's sorry, Ray, can, sorry can, I, can I just interrupt you there? Alan Bork said he was at the Riverside in 2008 when Skirt was right back and down and gave him a lesson. Do you see that Alan Bork right there? Right? <laughs> you couldn't put a more chicken shit player in defence as Martin Skirtle 
against a more chicken shit player going up against them. They literally did not collide. They wouldn't have tackled it. The only time we used to think about the Martin Skirt was big and tough. He was as tough as a pillow. That's as tough as Martin Skirt was. A, a duck feathered pillow, right? He was ridiculous. And that was about the only player. Any player could go up against Martin Skirt and get, teach him a lesson because all you had to do was pretend to be hard and he'd fucking let you run all over him. Terrible. Don't, you're getting me upset now. I was enjoying the best value players and these lads are throwing names out. They're just going to make me angry now. I'm not going to go to bed. I'm going to have to prowl around the gaff for about four hours to unwind thinking I was two fuckers. Yeah, go someone's on. sorry. In, you know, someone's thrown in Harry Kuehl in there, Aqualani. I mean, the people are determined to upset us here with some of these. <laughs> they're, they're really good. They're like, they're, you know what, mate? It's nice. <laughs> Um, but you know, I mean, look, we've, we've there's still plenty to to look forward to. Take the league games as they come now. Um, if if it, this does end up in the next few weeks as a, as I expect it to be, that you know, City are over the hill and gone. Um, you know, top four races. Um, we mightn't like it, but there's a little bit more. It's a little bit more relaxed. You, you, the, the pressure's not on. They, like these these draws that feel like defeats. They they they're, they're bleeding. The, the soul destroying. So let's concentrate. Let's get our let's get our heads together. By the way, I don't want this isn't a message to believe in players because I want the players <laughs> to win the league. But um, let's 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 win a bleeding trophy this season because I think it's the least that this squad deserves for its efforts this season, last season, the last few seasons is to at least get another trophy in the cabinet. And let's hope it's the big one um, and it's number seven because that that that. You know that for me, at the moment, actually would would give me more pleasure than it would be putting another Premier League trophy in the cabinet. To be honest with you, hmm. yeah, I think that's our best Kev. chance this year. I honestly think that's our best chance this year is uh, European Cup. I this isn't the same Arsenal side that we played a few weeks ago. For whatever reason, they should have. They had enough chances to beat City. They did really you? did. Yeah, the best thing they ever did was show Aubameyang out the door. Oh, Oh, fuck off to Newcastle if that's where you want to go. But they've settled, they've found a way of playing and they've all bought into it. They're a really good side. And if we if we're not on it over the two legs, we could get they they, they could do some damage because we're we're in no kind of form. In truth be told, we're in shocking form at the minute. We don't look anywhere near right. Uh, going forward at the back, and then you take Salah, Mane, and Naby out of the equation. We're 11 players short. We have 11 players out between COVID and now AFCON and injuries. So we've got no choice but to play some kids now. And we got to hope that they rise to the occasion and can, can do something. I think the league will take care of itself over, this, over the league season. We'll be fine. Um, I think we'll finish second. Um, I think City are just City are very good front runners, and if you give them a gap, they'll manage that gap fairly handy. But um, I honestly think our best chances in Europe over two legs. By the time Europe starts back, you'd hope to have players would be back, and COVID would be on the back burner. And I honestly think that we have a really, really good chance. If we're lucky with the draw, we have you have to have a bit of luck along the way. But I I would really fancy us in Europe. I really do. I think we're playing that kind of football at the minute that over two legs, nobody's gonna fancy us. Nobody's gonna to want to come to play us, even when we're looking a bit ropey in the league from time to time. Come come fe, come March, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think the just the frustrating thing really about what's happened the last few weeks in the league is I do think there's a there is a flaw there in City's makeup, and I think when they're in a title race and there is pressure applied, I know they pip us a few years ago, but but I think I think a genuine sort of three horse title race, you know, I think we could have come out on top if mm. if, if you know if that if that could have been sustained into kind of March, April time, I really think we could have. We could have come out on top in a three in a proper three horse race, and I, I just think it's a shame that the initiative has gone to City in such a big way over these last few weeks. And they are they're, they're just masters, past masters now at being able to, you know, stretch you know leads into 
from from dominant to unassailable leads in in a fairly short space of time. And you know, I I think you know if 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 they'd have been in a proper you know dogfight, I think they'd have come up short. But unfortunately, I think they've established a very very healthy gap, and um, I, I don't I don't I don't see them slipping up against Chelsea either. Uh, who 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 forgotten the FA Cup? Shrewsbury. It doesn't matter who we got in the fucking yeah. FA Cup. We should only send out. We should find the dogs that the teams own and just send them out to play. We shouldn't be even go near that thing. No, we should treat it similar to how we've treated the League Cup. And if we get through with these, you know, if we get handy draws and we can, and we can scrape our way through, you know, to a semi final by way of kind draws and you know decent decent performances from from youngsters and mix of youngsters and squad players then i'm all for it it's got to be at the bottom of the priority list at the moment but but similar to the league cup if we get to the latter rounds let's just try and win the thing yeah the, the problem for me is that we don't have we don't with with the afcon going on your squad gets smaller yeah with the injuries we have in midfield the squad gets smaller um so unless jones is ready to come back and harvey elliott's ready to come back you're, you're now you're using the same three players in midfield who are the. Well, I think Morton gets a, gets a bit of more game time. I think yeah, Robertson can play as well because he's not um, he's not suspended for that. Trent, uh, I'd have no problem. I would play Trent, and I'd play Go Gomez and Kanate at, at, at the back four. I know it's well, Minamino, against Shrewsbury. Nah, I'd no, be playing. I'd be playing. Billy Camillo and uh, Andre Wisdom and um, <laughs> Nabil Elzar and um, Usama Saidi and um, that German fella Sammy Jessel and all those lads. That's who I play in the FA Cup. Uh, you know, I, I cannot stand the FA Cup. It's a horrible, horrible competition. It's 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 a mockery of a competition. It's it's just to allow. I it's just to allow... I prefer the League Cup. I genuinely do. I like the League Cup because it's over and done with. I, I, I like I like yeah. the League Cup, and I like the way that they play it in the midweek, right? And it's, mm. it's not taking up the weekend space. We they they're not allowed to have a, a, a winter break because of this poxy FA Cup. If they put the FA Cup in the midweek and they split the two cups, one before Christmas and one after Christmas, one became the before Christmas Cup and one became the after Christmas Cup, I'd be a lot more interested in it then, right? And they left out the Champions League teams from the FA Cup. People will have a lot more interest in what goes on because in reality, the FA Cup offers nothing it's you don't get into you don't get into the Champions League um at best you're getting into the Europa the Europa, yeah, Europa, conference, Europa, League. Europa conference Cup League trophy thing um and it's it's a distraction and there's this myth about the romance of the cup uh, if I think if you go back and look at the last winners of, of uh, 25 of the last 30 years it's always somebody out of the top four that wins the FA Cup like it just that's just what happens because they tend to have the biggest squads and they always end up in the semi-finals and then go look at the semi-finals of the or, or, or the semi-finals of the League Cup as well as yeah. in the court yeah the semi-finals of the League Cup look at the teams that are in the semi-finals of the League Cup it just shows you again it's the it's the same teams the same top yeah. six seven teams that are going to be there thereabouts so for me I'd um I, I, if, if yeah, I'd look. I'd love us to win the league cup. I think it's over in February. It's it's a nice trophy to to have. It's it's one of those that you stick in your back pocket and you say, right, we've got silverware come the end of the season, and wherever we sit in the league and wherever we are in the Champions League, that's where we focus now from the run in. It just gets the t it gets the the old melt watering for that run in. It, it announces this uh, for me. The 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 league cup final always announces the run in. That's that's the way I look at the League Cup. It's always announced the, the, the run-in. You know from that point that it's only got 12 or 13 weeks left in the normal season. And where, whatever your season's going to be, it's going to be defined by those those 13 weeks, even though everything that went on before is, is important. But this, to me, is the most is the most important. So, yeah, the League Cup, all in. Well, like, I, I, Heller obviously plays. I don't want to see Adrian. And maybe Adrian can play in the FA Cup. Well, Keller will start. I want Keller to start. The, the, the other aspect to this is I want to parade. On a parade at the end of the season with a trophy, and I don't care if we stick a mock um, replica Premier League uh, mm. trophy from a few years ago back on it, just just to put uh, it up there. Yeah, just to just to whack it up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, parade the League Cup and a fake Premier League trophy around town. Um, that that do the job for me. Bit of celebration at the end. Of the season. So I, I think looking at this League Cup game, I think uh, like we've got. You know, I I I disagree somewhat with you, Kev. I think Arsenal are Arsenal um, under Arteta. Arsenal are have... Arsenal when they come back to Anfield. I think this is the good way this shapes up now. Let's yeah. go and do a job. The first, the first leg's away, isn't yeah. it? 
Yeah, let's just, let's just let's just get a result there, and then you know the usual. I'm a, I'm agreeing with you, Phil. The usual capitulation at Anfield in common. Mm. I think I think we're going to get penalties at the end of these two games. <laughs> I genuinely do. It's quite possible. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, our front three, I think, going into this game would more than likely be Elias. Not Elias, sorry. It'd be one of the kids on the right. Um, Jota <laughs> and Curtis Jones on the left. You know, so in fairness, Ta- Tafferel was a proper keeper, man. He wasn't. Tafferel he wasn't. Was a, he Tafferel wasn't, was a proper keeper. He wasn't. Yes, he, he was shite. He was um, not shite. He was. 82 yeah, Spain yeah. World Cup. He was fucking... He had, a, he had an awful haircut as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. He did have a dodgy bar. Himself and yeah. Falco had the two worst haircuts. In worst side. haircuts ever. And he was still holding on to his hair come the 1994 World Cup. It was desperate looking. Um, Laszlo, you're saying, saying the FA Cup is shite because it doesn't get you European football as elite as bollocks, to be honest. It's not. The FA Cup is shite because it's shite, right? The FA Cup is shite because it has this fake um, romance of the cup bollocks that hasn't existed since 1986 right so it's like i'm sorry but it's geek and it needs to die yeah. they should have killed off the competition years ago Um, nobody gives a shit about it right um <clears throat> let me see i think i think if i'm looking i don't want to see ox in the front tree but i'm just kind of just point out i don't want to see ox in the front tree Um, if you're going to play and play in midfield, uh, yeah, you're playing midfield yeah. i'm going with uh williams uh, right back I don't want to get uh, we can't afford to have Trent out uh, the lads yeah Gomez and Canate no issues there throwing those two boys in and then Simicas that's, that's what you know we've we've no issue with going in midfield he's not going to go fully weak uh, like if I was going to play midfield I'm assuming Thiago's not fit to return right um, I'd have Ox right. Henderson and Morton and I know that might sound but I think Henderson I don't think Henderson played really well uh, I don't think Henderson played well at all. And I think he needs a game. I think Henderson's the type who, who who likes to play when he's not playing well, so he can he can find that form and find that rhythm that he can get back into. And I think this will be a good game for him to, to, to get I'm involved. In. Surely Naby gets a run out. He's gone. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah with, with, with Fabinho. Because Fabinho's going to have to watch it. Tell to clap him off. <laughs> I'm going to go watch the game. There's no league game here. at the weekend. So. so he's gone off to watch the, the Afghan. He's gone out to watch the build up. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we don't play a league game now for a good while. So yeah. that's why yeah. I have no problem playing Trent and play well, right wing forward or something. I, I'd have no problem pl- um, playing Robbo, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because he's available. He's not suspended. Would, would, you play, would, you play, would you play Trent in midfield just for the crack? Just because all the English t- He's more players want like to play him in there, more just like for a laugh. play Nico right wing to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. they're up front, like yeah, Minamino, Divock. And, um, are they? Yeah. Well, what's the story? Yeah, I'd seen Minamino wasn't on the bench yesterday, so yeah, he's he's injured as well. Uh, don't know what the injury is. Same as uh, Divock. The, the Thiago bad injury. Time, is bad time to be getting an injury, yeah. isn't it? The Thiago, Thiago injury already... is worrying me because they've all they've said is that it's a hip injury. Mm. That could be anything. That yeah. could be a case of it's nothing but rest to put that right. It's not surgery, it's rest. And that could, you could be looking at two, three, four weeks for that. You know, so that's why I think you you see Curtis Jones playing off on a, in a front three. And more than likely you'll you will see Ox in a front three. I mm. and Jota maybe. Or maybe Ox in midfield and Jota up front. I don't yeah, know. Jota. No. Is Klopp allowed to run up for this one? Bobby. No. He's still have to isolate. Bobby's in isolation as well, isn't he? Yeah. Need to bring in the NFL rules. to be grand. Yeah. Stick yeah. a helmet on him. Yeah. On the side what, is that coming up now to the playoffs? Is yeah, that the, the regular go, season yeah. coming to an end then? We've got yeah, one, one more week to go. Well, one more Has week it all been zone. decided, or is there anything coming? Is there anything resting oh, on this weekend? Ray, Ray's been trying to throw the hints on it. My, my division's been decided. My interest is my interest is, is is for January tenth, the day everyone gets sacked. Um, because I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the the Bears head coach getting sacked. Not not the personal way. Matt Nagy comes across as a lovely bloke, but uh, yeah. Um, oh, so the Bengals. 
The beauty of the NFL is the Bengals were the worst team in football two seasons ago. And, uh, you know, Kurtz, you're getting the number one draft pick two years later. General, General asked me to please talk about Antonio Brown. That was ridiculous. I have to say, right, was, for, anyone, yeah. for, anyone, for anyone that doesn't watch American football, I, I, I get that. It's, it's terrible, right? Yeah, but, but this um, transcends sp- all sports. This transport is, yeah. Uh, and I'm Bork, you back to Giants last night, you absolute dope I, honestly right like uh, shane davo who's normally on with us does a weekly six uh team betting thing that a syndicate that he's in where he has to pick six teams and ray what did i say yesterday morning put your mortgage and your house on the bears to win the giants yeah. are the worst team oh, in the world right they and they are literally are, are terrible right anyway um so Antonio Brown, as we know, he's, he's, well, or you might know, he's he's definitely a controversial character. He's been involved in an awful lot of absolute scrapes um, and shouldn't really be playing in the NFL at this at this rate, to be totally honest. But he's playing for the Bucks. Um, next minute, there's just video, and all you see is that he's pulling his pads. He's taking his helmet off and he's throwing it down. He, he pulls his pads off, throws it down, right. Then takes his Under Armour tops off. I don't know why he took the Under Armour because it's not branded with the Buccaneer stuff at all. Throws that at the crowd, takes his gloves off, throws it at the crowd, keeps his boots on and his little tights and then starts doing jumping jacks and waving at the crowd across the and goes into the change room and disappears off him. He basically packed it in. He God. packed it in. He left the team, packed it in. In the, in the second quarter of a match while the game was going on, in the middle of the game, I was doing all this while the game was going on at this stage and they were losing. Um it was fantastic. Yeah, they, were losing. they actually came back and won the game. Won. <laughs> he was so close. He's got all of these kind of contractual bonuses, and he's yeah. so close to basically getting um, a million dollars spread over three different bonuses yeah. that, he, that, he, that he realistically would have got through the course of that game and next week's game. He, you know, he walked away from a million dollars as, as part of all of this. It was just oh, absolutely insane. Absolutely. It's absolutely insane. That's what like, happens when you get too much hits to the head. Well, that's that, that, that's well, what, that, that is that is the serious part of this. I mean, you know, that is the yeah, that that is yeah. the bit that they're saying that like his is his behavior being led by that um, CTE in terms of what's going because he, he yeah, is yeah. he's definitely a strange individual. That's the mm. best way to put it, right? For the type of scrapes and that he's been is. involved in, yeah. and I'll stand by it. He shouldn't be playing football. He they, they, he shouldn't be allowed in that league in terms of what's going on. Um, so uh, definitely that's it. But yes, I think it should be definitely worth. Um, have we seen Razor's record Ralph post? No, but I'm sure I'll go on to the timeline later on and have yeah, a look at it. I'm not sure he'll have outdone himself. Razor, yeah. to be fair, any anyone who follows Razor on Twitter, he comes out with some amazing stuff. Um, yeah. You know, it's um, his brain is a genius. He came up yeah, with the original yeah. GTA the hit of, of the whole lot of us as part of the trippers and, and, and did the whole thing that's been copied on a number of t shirts since then. But like, it's he's, his, his brain is great, he sees things um, really well and he and he executes them extremely well, right? Um, where are we? Where are we? Um, that's the, that's the pot, that's it for the noise. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, Kev, where are we beating Arsenal over the two legs? Yeah, okay, I, think, I don't think we, I think a draw. Thursday. Yeah, I think we do it. Yeah, I think we do it. But my biggest fear is then getting into a final with Tottenham and Harry Kane score an 89th minute winner. Football's got a funny way of um, coming full circle with some of can, these yeah. things. Can I tell you something? If I'm going to lose a final, I'd happily lose a final to Spurs in a fucking League Cup or an FA Cup because <laughs> nobody will give a shit about it. Apart from Laszlo Panaflex, who's getting very upset at the fact that I don't give a toss about the domestic cups that's because they aren't worth a wank that's been the forum i've been your host phil casey beside me is, is kev o'sullivan down the cork and below me of course is ray dickinson thanks for joining us there's loads of shows on during the week um and i, don't, I think football in the world might be back at some stage as well because that is of course man on podcast you'll see it it's it's, uh, it's on the feed as well um but that's it it's been a great show i just need to press the buttons to make it all work go Bengals, as they say in cincinnati good day Oh, man.